What is cancer? People don't, don't even know what it is. It's simply cell division out of control. I just told I told that in the class. What is cancer? They don't even know what, what's cancer. It's some growth. Yeah, uh, you know, it's, it's cell division out of control. What does that mean, cell division? Why, why the cells in our body, why, why, why my palm doesn't explode with a tumor when I'm looking at it? Because the, the cells are all controlled in their growth. Who controls the, um, the differentiated state of the cell? What's, main, what's keeping that cell from growing out of control, right? It's mitochondrial function. That's what it is. Okay, the very cell that's giving life and energy to the and putting in the bloodstream so all the cells can live is the organelle, the mitochondria. And that cell is keeping our cells under control. Okay, so when that organelle becomes corrupted chronically and is allowed to transition to fermentation, they lose growth control. That's another thing that's really important. Mitochondria control the cell cycle. Mitochondria control the destiny of the cell. If you injure yourself, that and the cells, mitochondria can control called apoptosis. You've heard of this programmed cell death that's controlled by the mitochondria. So, the mitochondria itself, uh, now that organelle becomes corrupted, it no longer can control death. The life of the cell is controlled by the function of the mitochondria, the life of our body is controlled by the function of the mitochondria and the cells. We breathe oxygen, we, 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 we perform our functions. But if that organelle becomes corrupted and loses control, the cell fall back, falls back on ancient pathways of proliferation out of control, driven by glucose and glutamine, unable to burn fatty acids or ketone bodies. So we have to drive home this simplistic message that cancer is a metabolic disorder driven by two fuels predominantly and cannot use ketones or fatty acids. So the strategy to manage cancer is, is embarrassingly simple transition the body over to fatty acids and ketones while you simultaneously target the two fuels driving the dysregulated growth. How hard is that? Why can't anybody believe that? Because we've been indoctrinated to think it's a hopelessly complicated disease where you have to irradiate and poison people to make them healthy. I mean, this is just nuts. It's good to discuss like P53 and all those things, like more specifically, because the entire field is focused on it. Okay, so let me say something. Um, we have a, we have a um, company down here in Kendall Square where they have all the biotech companies that pay, uh, the, the, uh, they paid $2.4 billion to buy a company that takes a chunk of your tissue and does a genomic screen on it. So I had the opportunity a couple of years ago to meet with a young lady who works at the company, okay? And they have two forms. You want the full, we'll look at a thousand different genes or we can do a, a short number of genes, it's a couple of hundred. And those genes are supposed to tell us what kind of targeting we're gonna to use to, uh, to treat the cancer. And you hear all these cancer patients say, oh, I have an ALK mutation or EGFR mutation. My cancer has this mutations. Let me just say something, they're irrelevant. They're all downstream effects, uh, P53 included. Uh, they're all downstream epiphenomena from the damage from the reactive oxygen species coming out of the tumor cell. So that they're charging $7,000 for the insurance companies to give a patient a readout on what kind of mutations they're tumors might have. If the mutations are effects and not cause, then that you're paying 7,000, you might as well flush your money down the toilet, but the, the information is irrelevant. Every one of those cells is fermenting. Uh, it doesn't make any difference what kind of mutation they have. They could have a hundred different kinds, thousands of mutations, they're all fermenting. So what, what relevance does it have? Because they're gonna take that information and use an immunotherapy, which is based on an incorrect theory. I mean, none of this makes any sense because it's built well, the, the cancer industry is built around an incorrect theory. And that's why we have 70 people an hour dying, 1,700 people a day, because the theories they're using are, are incorrect and they've led the population to think this is all important. It's not important. The mutations are largely irrelevant to the nature of the problem. They can't live without a fermentation mechanism. Forget about the mutate, it doesn't mean anything. EGFR, ALK mutations, this mutation, that mutation, P53, 15 different kinds of P53 mutations. It's all irrelevant. They're fermenting. Okay, what do they ferment? 
glucose and glutamine, right? What can they not use for energy? Ketones and fatty acids. Why? The mitochondria are defective. How do you know? Look under the electron microscope and you see defective mitochondria in every major cancer. They can't use fatty. How do you know? They store in the cytoplasm as big lipid drops because they can't used, be used as energy. All major cancers loaded with lipid drops. You have to have a good, strong mitochondria to burn fatty acids in ketone bodies. If the mitochondria are defective, you can't use those fuels. But if it is a healthy mitochondria, they can't. You wouldn't find a healthy mitochondria in cancer. Well, cancer is a mitochondrial metabolic I mean, disease. Like in, in someone without cancer. Oh, yeah. Oh, cancer. yes. Yes. And as a matter of fact, the normal cells in our body, not if we have a big tumor, of course, they're defective in their ability to use ketones and fatty acids, but the normal cells in our body can use it. The cancer cells, you have, they're dependent on the fermentation, so you can no marginalize them. We can take away the fuels, make the rest of our body healthy while we destroy the tumor cell. Not complicated. You're saying that cells store the fatty acids, and how do we know that the they're The cancer cells. Used, the, yeah. Cancer cells. The cancer cells. Yeah. They're storing fatty acids. In how their cytoplasm. Mean? How do we know that they're not using those later on? We can see that they're storing them, but don't we also store other it, things in our body that we- not, not, not big droplets of lipids in your, we don't see that. Now, um, if you damage the mitochondria by taking away oxygen, you immediately see lipid drops starting to form in the cytoplasm. And that's because it's a protective. If you try to burn fatty acids with minimal oxygen, uh, you can, and then oxygen would come back into the system. You get reactive oxygen species and kill the cell. So as a way to protect the cell from dying, you store the fatty acids in these vacuoles. Because if the, if the cancer cell were to uh, use the fatty acids, the ROS would come up and kill the tumor cell from the, the fatty acids. They generate a tremendous amount of reactive oxygen species in a cancer cell, but not in a normal cell. So you, you have to, so the cancer cell stores them as a protective mechanism, not to use them as energy. If they would try to be used, they would kill the cell. So they're built up as, as this. And, and, if, 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 and if you damage the mitochondria in a population of cells, immediately get lipid drops. And if you remove the damage, the lipid drops go away because the mitochondria were not permanently damaged. In a cancer cell, the mitochondria are permanently damaged. So they cannot use fatty acids nor ketone bodies. They're driven on a fermentation metabolism. How do you differentiate for, between a permanently damaged mitochondria and a mitochondria that can go back and forth between fermenting if, the, well, the, if both the, of them are storing. Yeah, but the, it's not that we go back and forth. We have a temporary capability of using fermentation when we stop breathing or have a heart attack. Uh, you'll see the buildup of, of, of fermentation waste products immediately in the bloodstream, succinic acid and lactic acid. But if you can start breathing again, the waste products disappear. The accumulated fatty acid lipid drops go away. In cells that have not permanently damaged mitochondria, cancer cells will always have those problems because the mitochondria are permanently damaged. Is there a structural difference in the, in the mitochondria that yeah. makes it so? You can look under the microscope and see the structural damage that you see. Criste or absence, the ghost mitochondria. Sometimes there's very few mitochondria. Sometimes there's a massive number of mitochondria, but they're all morphologically abnormal. So you know immediately that this is a cell that's not able to generate energy through oxidative phosphorylation efficiently to remain alive. And that's the main difference between the normal cell and the tumor cell. The normal cell can use oxidative phosphorylation to get energy. The tumor cell can't. And they are dependent on a fermentation metabolism permanently. Okay. So to get rid of them, you have to take away the fermentable fuels and that they'll, they'll die. And uh, because they have no form of energy, they can't use oxygen in an effective way. They can use a little bit, depending on how bad the cancer is. Usually most of the highly malignant cancers are shot. They're, they're completely fermentative. They can't use, they can't uh, do that. So if you can raise oxygen tension through hyperbaric oxygen or one of these things, you can actually blow up the tumor cells by, 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 by just increasing the oxygen around them. Rather than the normal cells get super healthy, the tumor cells explode. So it's so different. The metabolism makes the difference between the normal cell and the tumor cell. And once people realize, not the mutations, the somatic mutation theory is, 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 but that's the theory that's driving the National Cancer Institute, the theory that's driving all the pharmaceutical companies, the theories that are driving the hospital, the administrators, the, giving the different drugs and chemo and all that stuff. So you're saying that the entire industry is incorrect. 
in the way they deal with the cancer. It's absolutely right. And the results are, what do we have? 1,700 people a day dying, 70 an hour. Now, in terms of pharmaceutical motivations, we often think about the clinical trials that are funded by pharmaceutical companies in order to create or in order to clear a drug that can then be sold. Mm. Couldn't they do that with Don? Yeah, Don, uh, which is a glutamine targeting drug. Yes, they could do that. One of the big questions we have to ask, you guys need to ask the question, how is it possible for the Food and Drug Administration to constantly approve uh, toxic drugs based on an incorrect theory to treat cancer patients. But the key drug, a key drug that's sitting there, that's already been used on little children and people, is not approved. How do you explain that? And they said, well, that drug was used years ago and it didn't work, it was too, to too toxic. Look at the toxicity of that drug versus Red Devil, these drugs, what do we call that? Cisplatin, um, Vimistat, all these different kinds of drugs that we're using that are horrifically toxic uh, compared to done. Bevis, well, Bevacizumab is a Vastin. That drug is immoral. Anybody who uses that should be stamped, I'm an immoral person on this planet because that drug targets vascularization of the tumor. It's an anti-angiogenic drug used mostly, it was, it was stopped for breast cancer because it was causing colon perforation and killing women uh, before the, the tumor would kill them. But we use it for brain cancer constantly, and it's immoral to use that drug because it causes the tumors to spread throughout the whole brain, almost guaranteeing your demise. Uh, very few people, if any, I've ever seen a long-term survivor using Avastin. So you might as well sign your death certificate as soon as the guy gives, the, the oncologist would give you that. And any oncologist that would do that is immoral because they lack knowledge and they shouldn't be practicing medicine. Uh, anybody who, and they say, well, I never heard of that. You don't read the scientific literature. You got to read the scientific literature to know that.